Here is the Google site that I have created for my photography class uh, as a demonstration so that you can see sort of the basics of where you will create things at. So once you have signed into your Google account and you have gone to Google Sites and chosen to create a new site that is blank, not from a template, uh, it will take you to this first page. And so one of the first things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to give it a name that is here. Now I put the word demo in mine just because then it's easy for me to keep it straight. Uh, don't put the word demo in yours, but put your um, site as photography by, use your first name, you can add your last initial to it, and that way your um, portfolio will have at least a title that is easy to find within your Google Drive. Uh, when you put that in, it will also create uh, here in this top corner, you can, again, it'll don't put the word demo in it, it will just create it. And you can put your title here as well so that we can see what your first page is. Now mine says welcome, that might be because I've renamed it. Yours might say home. I'll show you later how you can rename that. Uh, as far as doing your text boxes and creating a banner, etc., over here on the right hand side is where you'll see that we've got uh, sort of three tabs. We've got the insert tab. This is where you can insert all kinds of things, text boxes and images. You can embed code. You can insert files from your Google Drive. Say you wanted to put a PowerPoint or something into your portfolio. Uh, lots of little templates for content. Uh, you can put in image carousels and buttons and dividers and all kinds of things that are in there. So that's that piece of it. If I go across to the pages part, this is where we would create our pages and our sub pages. So inside introductory, you can see I've got several sub pages, same thing inside my intermediate and inside my advanced. Those have been created here. So when I scroll that down, you can see that they are all there. Uh, if you want to rename, then beside this home button, you can see there's a little house there. That's your home page. The three dots give you some choices that we can duplicate it. Properties is where you would go to rename that. And this is how we also add sub pages when we want to have sub pages inside of a menu item. Themes, you can choose first. Uh, themes are where you will create the font style that you would like to use. There's a few different types that are in here. I would suggest that you not use impression just because all caps is harder to read, uh, but any of the other ones are, are fine. And it gives you, depending on which one you pick, it will also give you some different colors and some different font styles that you can use for it. So go ahead and make that choice there. Also, you can create uh, this background uh, with an image. So I can put here my own image by uploading. I can also select an image that is in the stock, um, ones that come built into Google Sites. So go ahead and choose something there. And then for the header type, you will also in your header type, uh, cover, large banner, banner or title only. So uh, if you want that background to be about the same size as you see on my screen, you're going to want to choose banner. Large is really big. You can play with those and you can see what they do. To create a text box, I'm going to go back over to my insert panel and for text box, I would just click this button that says text box. You can see it just creates a box that I can type into. You've got all kinds of functions in here. I can create a title where it just matches my theme in color and style of my font. I would suggest you not change your font and your sizing individually through here because that does change based on your theme. So if I decide, oh, I don't really want this kind of blue teal colored theme and I want to choose, say, pink, um, then if I go over to my themes, it would automatically update my titles and they would be pink. Whereas if I had changed them manually through this font button, then those manual changes that I create are not going to be updated if I ever change my theme. And you can resize these boxes once you get them in there by dragging on those handles. They will snap to where you can see a column ends at in those grid lines that come up. I can delete it through here. I can change things into bullets, etc. Center it. Uh, lots of things that I can do for it. And then I can also delete it over on the side. This little bar that you see right here is also for dragging items. So if I wanted it to be below, I can just drag it and drop it. 
I'm going to get rid of this one because I don't need it. So what you should have is a nice box that is your welcome that welcomes people to your website. And this is where we will eventually put our panorama photo that we will take during the class. So um, I've just put a little note there that that's where your panorama will eventually go. It's time to start making some other pages. So we'll go across to this pages tab that you can see and we are going to insert uh, an introductory, an intermediate and advanced as main pages and put the sub pages underneath. Now if you're at the introductory level of this photography class, you only need to create the introductory and then you will create each of these sub pages by again going to those three dots on introductory and saying add a sub page. To create a page on its own, you're going to use this plus button that is down here at the bottom. If you are joining the class in your second year or in your third year and are in the intermediate or the advanced level, well then you're a pro at this because you already have a site from last year. So you can just create your uh, sub pages within your intermediate and you can also create your advanced and your sub pages if you are at that level. I'm going to take you over to my introductory uh, page and then you can see here I've just put a piece of text that says the pages in this section demonstrate my photography at the introductory course level so you can copy that or you can create something similar of your own and we will put your panorama from your first year of the course uh, on that page. For inside the first page is composition. This is the first one we're going to be building together. So I've started to put things in here. I have created a template through this insert panel and I've created this content block first. So I'm just gonna click it. You can see what happens. It builds a content block and then I can put my title in, I can add my text in and it gives me that nice spot to put in a photograph that I can then put in either by uploading it or by selecting an image uh, that I already have or from my drive. I'm gonna just delete this section and show you one of the things that you want to be cautious about, okay? And that is when you put in a photograph. So I'm gonna choose this one. When I put in a photograph, if I were to start resizing this and do crazy things with it, you can see that it will zoom in and it will change the ratio of the box, but I'm losing a lot of my photo in there. So if you're going to change the size of your box for a vertical uh, photo, then once you've got it there, I'm going to make this really obvious that I've cut off some things. But once you've got it there, you want to hit this little uncrop button that comes up. And what that'll do is it'll keep it proportional to what the original size of the photograph was. So I'm going to make that a little bit bigger because that's pretty small. I'll try and keep it in that proportion that I think it is, but I will hit that button and then it'll make sure that I'm not missing out on any of my photo that's there. Please put in your metadata, like I've got shown here, you can find that metadata in Bridge is where we go to get it. I've shown you that in class already as to how to do that. And if you're not using Bridge, then you can go to the properties of the file. I'm sure that your teacher will show you where exactly you can get your metadata for that. Your teacher may also ask you to uh, put in some more extra information to do a bit of a critique on your photo, what you liked about it, what was challenging, how you overcame those challenging, maybe describing the composition rule that is being used uh, in it, how it could be improved, etc. So doing some self-critiquing and peer review is really helpful to us. We all learn by seeing what we maybe could have improved on and then next time we take a photograph, hopefully we can put those plans into action action. I'm going to quickly just show you another couple of really important buttons. Uh, this first one is this top one here in the in the top corner, this publish button. Your site is not live until you publish it. The first time that you publish it, it's going to take you into these published settings and it's going to grab uh, a URL web address that will be based on what your title was. And so what it does is it adds it to the sites.google.com. Uh, in your school division, it may also um, have part of your school division linked to that. Uh, there's also some settings here for requesting that it's not searchable and uh, some review for editors. 
I'm just going to cancel out of mine since it's already published. And then whenever you make a change to something, you need to publish it in order to make those changes live. So this is a working view. Nobody sees what you've done or what you've changed to it until you hit that publish button. So remember, I put that extra couple of boxes in there and then I deleted them. So it knows that I don't have any unpublished changes to review. But if I did have changes, then they would show up on the left hand side and I would be able to review things and then have to hit my publish button a second time in order to make that website live. Once your website is live, you also, and really it doesn't even need to be live for you to look at this button here, which is your preview button. This shows you what your site will look like on different sizes of screens. So if I hit that, you'll see that I'm currently looking at a large screen like a computer monitor. If I go to this middle one, I would be looking at it on a tablet. And you can see how the menu changes a little bit. It goes up into the corner. And if I were looking on a phone on a mobile device, then you can again see what it would look like on that mobile device with my menu in it. And I can close out of that to exit my preview mode. To share your site with other people so that they can have a look at it, then what you want to do is make sure you're sitting on your welcome page or your home page because that's the link that you want to share with people. And you just go to this link button and say copy the published site link. And so once I do that, it literally just takes and shows what my site URL is. I can copy that link and now I can send that wherever. I could email that to someone. Um, I could post it uh, within a, a Google Classroom. Uh, I can do all kinds of ways to share it, put it on social media if you wanted to. So lots of things that you can do. That is just a viewing link. That is not any kind of an editing link that anyone can access your site and make changes to it. If you do want to collaborate with someone else, that is what this share button is for, is so that you can invite other people to contribute or to edit your site with you. I hope that was helpful. I know that was a very quick run through, uh, but as just a quick demo of what you're going to be building this semester in order to hand in your photographs for me.